The book's been, it's been a fun project because we created it together. And I, I think that really we, we've said it's a project to provoke the Christian political imagination. And I think for what a lot of us are hungry for is, is a faith that engages the deep social and political questions of our time, but it's very peculiar in how it does it. And so this is a, an invitation to the peculiar politics and imagination of Jesus. The other thing that I think the book does is it, it challenges us to think outside the box of, of, of like where our hope lies. And our hope doesn't lie in a candidate or in a party, but ultimately our, the, the hope of the world is Jesus and the kingdom of God. So one of our hopes in the book is really to raise the question of uh, what does it mean to vote? You know, because everybody's going to be, oh, who are you voting for? And, and uh, the, the distinctly kingdom question for us is not how do we vote on November 4th, but how do we live on November 3rd and November 5th, and, and voting is something we do every day with our lives. So this isn't just a book about the election, but this is a book that, that calls into question what, what we're living for and, and who we're pledging allegiance to every single day. I, I hope that we begin to see uh, beautiful expressions of creativity in the church that just radiate God's love and hope and and embody uh, the, the the good news so that that they um, I, I love the quote that says if you want to know what we believe watch how we live unfortunately I think a lot of Christians have had very little concrete or substance to our faith and we have a doctrinal statement but you know our lives uh, don't always reflect the peculiarness of Jesus so I, I um, can't wait to see all the ripples you know that that uh, of, of communities that are living out uh, put peculiar you know imagination and political imagination and who they are um, that's why we're traveling all over the place is to gather those stories and to inspire each other and uh, I always say we're, we're reminding each other that we're not crazy, or if we are crazy, we're not alone. And I, I, when Peter Morin says that if we're crazy, it's because we refuse to be crazy in the same way that the world's gone crazy. Uh, that, that's what we're about, is going, this world is, is such a mess, and we want people in a church that are radical nonconformists, that are not, not conforming to those patterns uh, of our world that are so out of sync with God's dream for it. The beautiful thing is, I think that's exactly where a lot of the early Christians were. Is they had lost a lot of hope in in the the Roman dream, you know, in the in the the, the empire in which they lived, and 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 yet, like in the middle of that, the. The, the gospel and the hope of Jesus shined all the brighter. So I think that, that part of uh, the, the hope of the time that we're living in is, yeah, kings and presidents aren't going to lead us to peace, but it's the church, it's the people of God that uh, are set apart from the nations to be something different, to live something differently, and, and, and to live in a way that fascinates the world. And we, you know, we give the example in the book of the Amish, and, and uh, we got a little section about how they dealt, dealt with uh, the act of terror in their school uh, called the Amish for Homeland Security. And, and in a lot of ways, that's what we're hopeful for, is, is a church that can, by uh, the own, its own witness and embodiment of a culture that's different from so much around us, just radiate uh, God's love in this time.